Well, hello class. This is Professor Shalomo Levy, and we're here on the last day of our Boston tour. Uh, so far, we've been to the site of the Boston Massacre, the site of the Boston Tea Party, and we're ending our tour today almost in reverse order of the site of the Battles of Lexington and Concord. I'm standing here on what used to be called the Old Concord Road. This is the road that uh, Paul Revere, Sam Prescott, and William Dawes would have taken on the night of 1775. For those of you watching it, studying this in American history, and how it differs from the way perhaps you learned about this in elementary school, or maybe even in some popular movies, and certainly according to the popular poem, The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. When you look at the poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, uh, the thing to remember is that Longfellow wrote that poem in 1861, roughly 90 years after the actual event, after all of these people were dead. In fact, he wrote it during the first year of the American Civil War. And this explains perhaps why some of the facts are reported the way they are. First of all, he only mentions Paul Revere. And in fact, the poem is called The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Well, why is that? If you remember the opening stanza of the poem, it says, Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere, April 19th, 1775. Hardly a man is still alive who remembers that fateful day and year. So of the three people who rode that night, only Paul Revere, only his name Revere, rhymed with the word year. And perhaps that's why William Dawes and Samuel Prescott were not mentioned in the poem. And because they were not mentioned in the poem, people forget about them. And in fact, what actually happened that night is when they uh, left Boston, they did have the signal, one if I land, two if I see. That part is true. The British left by sea, and uh, Paul Revere and Samuel Prescott and William Dawes got as far as Lexington. And then from Lexington, as they began to move to Concord, why are the British trying to get to Concord? This really is a consequence of both the Boston Massacre of 1770 and of the Boston Tea Party, what we call a Tea Party, the destruction of uh, British tea in 1773 uh, that resulted in the destruction of by millions of dollars uh, of, of tea uh, in today's currency. In response to that, the British introduced what was called the Intolerable Acts, that's what the Americans called them, where they shut Boston Harbor, they uh, closed the, the Massachusetts legislature, uh, and demanded that all of that tea in the interim, General Gage... Okay, let's take a quick look at this map just to orient us as to where we are. Hopefully you can see my cursor. Uh, I'm standing uh, right where the X is on this map between the cities of Lexington and Concord. This is the spot where Paul Revere was actually captured. Uh, and then they took his ho horse and he had to walk back to Boston. Uh, Boston is where they begin on, on April 19th, and the Americans were expecting some type of British action. Uh, the British knew that there were weapons and ammunition stored, particularly here in Concord. Also, they were looking to arrest John Hancock. Uh, he's the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence, and of course, the reason he puts that big signature there, John Hancock, is he doesn't have anything to lose. The British are already looking for him uh, as a smuggler of tea and other things. Uh, they're also looking for Sam Adams uh, as a provocateur, instigator of things like uh, the Boston Massacre and one of the leaders of the Sons of Liberty. So they're expecting the British uh, to move uh, at some point, which is why they have this system of lights in the uh, tower of the church. And when they see the British crossing, uh, the harbor here, uh, Paul Revere and Samuel Prescott uh, begin uh, the alert really to get to Concord and alert 
John Hancock uh, that the British uh, are coming to arrest them. But uh, as they, the main route, the Concord Road, that's where you see there, I'm staying with my friend, my college roommate, uh, Peter here in Arlington and friends in Lexington. And uh, they are uh, following this route, sometimes taking back roads uh, from the main Concord Road. And uh, when, uh, when, when they're captured here, uh, Samuel Dawes and William Prescott managed to escape. They turn the horses and they jump over the fences, but Paul Revere is captured. Uh, they make it uh, to Concord and they do alert the Americans there, particularly John Hancock, so he escapes as well. Uh, but the British do capture uh, weapons and supplies there in Concord. They destroy them. Uh, shots were fired here at Lexington on this green, and I have some pictures and video uh, of that as well. Uh, those are the first shots fired during the war, uh, and no one knows exactly who uh, fired first, whether it was the Americans or the British, but shots are fired. Um, and uh, the Minutemen, as they call, uh, come from all these, these different towns, and they begin to take up positions along the road, and they will fire at the British soldiers as they retreat. It's about 20 miles from Concord back to Boston, and as they're retreating, the British are, uh, are taking fire from the Americans from the side of the road. Uh, and so this is, you know, to give you just a sense of, of where all of this is taking place. Cambridge, of course, is where Harvard University is, and we were there. And it's in the city of Boston uh, where you had the, the uh, Boston Massacre, and in this harbor where you had the, the um, Boston Tea Party. That was in 1773. So uh, this is two years later, um, and you see escalation of tensions and conflict. Uh, with the British, but it is not in Boston, right? This is Boston, this is Lexington, this is Concord, um, and uh, this is what's taking place on that night. Okay, let's go back to the scene. Colonies, some of them in North America, some, of course, in Great Britain itself, but they all consider themselves British. So the distinction that they made was between the standing British army and the militia, which were made up of local colonists. Uh, by the way, the militia also fought for the British during the Seven Year War, or what we call the French and Indian War. People like George Washington fought for the British, but he fought as part of the American militia. Um, these militia uh, had been around, it was, it was the law in Massachusetts and most colonies, that all able-bodied men over the age of 18 were supposed to serve in the militia. So they always had these militias. The question is, with militia or British subjects themselves, would they turn and fire on regular British soldiers? This would be uh, British citizens fire on other British citizens. That's the way to think of it. What you have emerging is a separate American identity that we are not British, we're American. For those of you in America who are reading Benjamin Franklin's autobiography, Benjamin Franklin describes a moment when he says in his own mind that I am no longer British, I'm American. Okay. Up until that point in his life, he'd always thought of himself as American. And so the reason this is the shots heard around the world and really the start of the American Revolution is on the morning of April 1970, when they meet at that field in Lexington, just a few miles from here, when shots are fired and no one knows for sure who fired the first shot, was whether it was a Minuteman or whether it was a British soldier, but once those first shots are fired, then that is considered an act of war. Okay. Last thing I want you to think about is the consequences of this battle. Um, 73 British soldiers were killed. And that's why, from the British point of view, this is the start of the American Revolution. We often think and often celebrate July 4th as the start of the revolution. That was issuing a piece of paper. The British didn't care about that document. What they cared about is the moment uh, British subjects in America opened fire on British soldiers and killed 73 soldiers. Think of it this way. 
if we can if we consider the murder of five Americans in Boston, the Boston Massacre, and that's when five people were killed, then what do you think the British would think of 73 British soldiers being killed by Americans? They consider that an act of war. And so after April, they began raising an army uh, to come to the United States. This is why uh, in November of 1775, Lord Dunmore would issue his Dunmore Proclamation promising freedom to any slaves who would fight for the British because the British are in the process of raising an army. They'll send over thousands of redcoats. They will uh, hire mercenaries called German Hessians to fight for the British. They will hope that American loyalists will also fight for, for the British. And they offer freedom to African Americans who will fight for the British. African Americans fight on both sides of the American Revolution, as we saw. Uh, Crispus Attucks, the first person to die in the American Revolution, was an African American. And here, on the battles of Lexington and Concord, a man by the name of Peter Salem was uh, an African American slave who was promised his freedom, who fought in the battles of Lexington and Concord, and then fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill, also not too far from here. So I hope that this uh, scene uh, from the, the site, this is the actual site where Paul Revere was captured. They took his horse at about 1.30 in the morning and his shoes, and he was forced to walk back to Boston. Samuel Dawes and William Prescott managed to escape. They turned their horses, and they were able to get away. So the irony is that Paul Revere, the only person mentioned in the poem, is the one who didn't make it to Concord. You see the uh, the uh, fences and the stone hedges along the wall. This extended the whole length of the Concord Road all the way back to Boston. And the British made it uh, to Boston. They uh, destroyed the ammunition there. Uh, but on their way back, 20 miles, marching back from Concord back to Boston, on the way back, the American uh, Minutemen lined up along this road from the woods and behind the stone walls. Uh, the muskets that they used weren't very accurate uh, beyond 100 yards. So this is why they tended to stack, stay close together, particularly the British, uh, because if, if, if it's not accurate beyond 100 yards, by being in close to close, shoulder to shoulder, and firing the muskets in the general's direction, they're more likely to hit something. But the minute men lined up along this road here and began shooting the British soldiers as they retreated back to Boston. In the end, they killed about 73 British soldiers. And that really is the beginning of the American Revolution. Well, I hope that this was helpful, and I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you ever get to come to Massachusetts and, and to Boston, I encourage you to visit these sites, enjoy them, learn about them, come back on vacations and with your families. And until then, take care.